Hello. I want to say, first of all, I'm very, very honored that you guys asked me to come give a lecture. I mean, I'm just a flower farmer, and you guys are the master gardeners. So I feel very, very honored, and I wanted to say thank you. Um, I thought today I would pop on here and talk about, um, I guess it has to do a little bit with climate change. Um, we all live in 6B, uh, Kentucky, and we know how that can be sometimes. We get torrential downpours. We get some pretty bad winter weather. We get lots of wind. And it can be a real challenge. Now, I came from the East Coast. I lived in Florida for 15 years, and I lived in uh, Virginia growing up. And Virginia's where I farmed a lot. I tried to farm in Florida. I found that very difficult as well. So I started farming underwater. <laughs> I ended up propagating, growing corals, and ended up having a very, very successful pet store business in reptiles and aquatics. But my sister and I both work for the National Aquarium in Washington, D.C. So we did a lot of research on climate change and what it's doing to the planet. And my sister and I looked at ourselves and we said, hey, what are we doing? You know, we're not doing much to mitigate climate change. We need to change our lifestyle. So that's when we decided that we wanted to get a piece of property and be self-sufficient, self-sustaining, and cut back on our carbon footprint. And hopefully that's what we've done here in Kentucky. We've really tried. Now, with that being said, one of the ways that I've done that is by trying to go no-till as much as possible. I do have a tractor, I do have a tiller, and sometimes there's times when you have to use these implements. Um, and I'm pretty sure that you guys know that it tears up the symbiotic relationship in the soil and that it's not a great thing to do. I wanted to learn how to grow in the soil without tilling. Now, when I first started this adventure, I tilled everything because I was afraid that there would be a dead pan underneath here. So I plowed down 16 inches and then disked it. And then I thought, well, let me put down landscape fabric and just work through the landscape fabric and not have to till again. Well, I laid down a whole bunch of landscape fabric in the fall. And then in the spring, when I walked on it, I sunk up to my ankles. I was like, ooh, that's not good. So I ended up having to pull up all the landscape fabric. And then I thought to myself, well, let me do raised beds then. So I will show you what I did for raised bed and what happened with all that. So you can see here this mound of dirt. Of course, this is not as wide as a normal bed would be because I'm actually prepping this to have the wood around it. But I used to just mound the dirt up. I till it, mound it up and try to build a semi-permanent bed I would plant it in the fall and then I would mulch it heavily. But what ended up happening was it all washed away, especially on this lower end. And all my seedlings, all my seed, everything I had would just wash away. So you saw that I tried to do the raised beds without the sides on them. It didn't work at all. With the torrential downpours in Kentucky, it just didn't work. And if anybody follows the podcast, uh, Farmer Jesse with the no-till growers, he equates Kentucky as being subtropic. And having lived in Florida for 15 years, I will have to agree 100% with him. Uh, the torrential downpours, the um, hail that we get, the unexpected winds that we get, and believe it or not, I lived in um, New Smyrna Beach, which is 20 minutes south of Daytona, and I've seen it snow three times there. And every February, we get down into the 20s. It doesn't stay in the 20s for very long, just a little bit in the middle of the night, but it's enough to where you can't grow tropicals there, no tropical plants. And I find that the Kentucky weather is very, very similar to that. And I think what we have to fight here the most there are the wet winters. The wet winters that we get are terrible. And with that being said, I went to raised beds, but raised beds with wooden sides. And let me show you what they look like. 
So these are my raised beds with the wooden sides and a corner block that is specifically designed for raised beds. You can see the hole in the center. That's for putting a piece of rebarb in there in case you wanna go make your raised beds a little bit taller. I have found that the six inches that I have here is plenty. I can grow carrots, radishes, beets, and not have to worry about um, anything going crooked or anything like that on me. Now I've got the wooden sides on them. Now these wooden sides right here are just some hodgepodge that I put together, just some extra boards I had laying around the farm. But I've gone to a board that's a lot less expensive and I'll show you that later. Because the one thing about these raised beds are they are pricey. But for me, I find that the price is well worth what I get in return. I have cattle panels that I make tunnels. They work perfect. I have these hoops. As you can see here, they are a half inch conduit, metal conduit that I have bent with a hoop uh, bender that I got from Johnny's. I can go ahead and use these to put my shade cloth on. In the winter time, I can use them to put plastic on if I want to or I can put my Remy, which is the row cover, floating row cover. Then I get these little clips that you can get online or just about anywhere, and it holds everything on there nice and tight. With these, let me show you over here, with the raised beds, I put these on and these go right down in there and then the hoops slide right over these. I get these from Little King. They are a fiberglass fence post that is used for electric fences. They're four feet tall. I drive them down in the ground two feet. And then I can slide my hoop right over top of them. And down it goes. Then that makes it very easy to weed eat, to run the lawnmower up against it, and it just works out really perfect. So now I'm going to show you how I try to use the raised beds without the soilless soil. This is soilless soil. It's a BM6, and I'll show you some of that later. But I find that this works best for me because it mitigates all the weeds. I don't have to do hardly any weeding at all. Let me show you some of that. Now the soil that I have in here is the most pricey thing I have to buy for this setup. And the reason I have done it this way is because, do you see any weeds in here? And granted, I did pick the weeds out, but there weren't that many. There was really maybe in this whole 50 some foot row, 20 weeds. But let me take you over to this bed. This does not have the soilless soil or the BM. And look at that mess. You can't tell the difference between the pathways and the, the growing. The thing about your soilless soil is the ability to weed very easily. So up there I have carrots and, and this stuff was fall planted. So you're going to get some weeds blowing in over the winter and this area here, right here, I've started some lettuces by just direct seeding them. I didn't do too good, so I've got a tray over there. I'm going to gonna, gonna um, finish it out with those. But your soilless soil gives you the ability to weed very easily. See that? Everything comes out with it. You just go down right below it. Loosen it up and then pull it right out. Now make sure you get all your soilless soil off because you don't want to waste any of that stuff. It's way too expensive. But anything that gets on it just pops right out. Now these here grow by a runner. And so these are a little difficult to eradicate once you get them and they blow in by seeds. But you can see how much of the root system comes out with it. It's very, very nice. So they're not going to be able to spread as readily in this because you're able to get all the little runners everything that goes with it right on out of the soil see that it's just really really convenient 
and then all you have to do is smooth it back over and you're not really disturbing the soil too much so the microbes are still okay you're just doing the first few inches of the soil around what you're doing sometimes you got to go a little deeper but you know you got to get rid of the weeds and then i just come right over it with my hand and disturb the very top of it in case there's any more weed seeds they were getting ready to pop up i'm going to go ahead and bury them and um, hopefully they won't germinate after they've been buried because a lot of weed seeds need light to germinate and so if you bury them pretty deep which is not very deep considering but considering how small the seeds are it's pretty deep for them they will not grow and that's a big plus of the soilless soil too